Today we're going to do an interesting menu, hot weather fair. All the stuff that you would want to do ahead, a great summertime menu, you want to do ahead in summer. And I'm going to start, we're going to do a salmon, and I want to start with mushroom here, which are going to be added to the aspic of the salmon. When you do mushroom like this, you wash them at the last moment. You know, at the last moment, I put them under water, wash them and cut them. Don't wash them ahead because they discolor. What we want to do here is to put that, I have a cup of water here, that's uh, just a cup of water and a dash of salt, and we want to bring that to a boil. Next, what I want to do is to poach the salmon. And first, I want to do a stock with this, with onion. So I put a little bit of a sliced onion. Thinly sliced onion. What we are doing actually is a vegetable stock, you know, which I put in there and that vegetable stock to flavor the salmon that we are going to cook in it later. So, I have some Herbe de Provence here, which is a mixture of different type of herbs. I'm putting that on top of uh, this. Water, I have three cups of water here. Salt in there. Uh, a dash of pepper. And a dry, fruity type of wine that I eat about a cup. This is the base of our salmon. We want to cook this bring it to a boil and you want to cook that for about five, six minutes to really develop the taste. And after that, add your salmon to it. I have a pound of salmon here, which is totally clean and you can cut it in half in two strips, either this way or this way. Maybe I'll cut it this way and actually bring it together to make a type of uh, sausage, if you want, this way. And next, I want, this is, hasn't been cooking long enough, but by the time it uh, brings to a boil, boil four or five minutes, you add your salmon to it, bring it to a boil, and shut up the heat and let it 10, 12 minutes into that hot liquid, and that's going to be enough. And this is what you get at the end. I have one here, which is totally uh, cooked now, and what we want to do is to remove it from the hot water, the hot liquid, rather, the hot stock, drain it a little bit and we want to use that liquid now to do what we call a clarification and to do an aspic with this and the process of clarification is a very interesting process by which with egg white usually you're going to clarify liquid to have it crystal clear I see that my mushroom are boiling nicely now they should be about cooked enough and I need the liquid of those mushrooms also to add to the clarification. So I'm going to add the liquid in there and keep my mushroom. The mushrooms are going to go in the, in the salmon, on top of the salmon itself. Remember, all there is here is water. So it's nice and clean. There is no fat or anything like that here. So I can put that on the side and the clarification is going to be done with those different vegetables. The green, you use only the green of leek, the green of celery, the green of anything, and here I have about a cup of the green of leek. You don't use the white, the white will tend to cloudy the aspic. See, a clarification basically is a flavoring agent. You have a stock, and the stock has to be clarified and flavored. So it's almost like doing tea, you know? Uh, all the green like that, which is going to give me flavor very fast. I have tarragon, I have parsley, all of the type of green that I will put in there. A carrot, again for flavor, cut into small pieces. You know, it doesn't have to cook along at all. Although sometime, uh, I have one egg white here because this is the process of clarification, as I say, with the egg white. I have some uh, crushed black pepper and an envelope of gelatin, which is about two teaspoons of plain gelatin, which finish what we call the clarification. What I add to it a little bit, it's maybe a teaspoon or two of soy sauce to give me a little bit of color in the clarification that is in the juice. So this, what I want to do, I have the liquid which is boiling here, is to mix that to it. You don't want to uh, put it directly in it. You don't want to cook the egg white, you see. You want to mix this first together this way. 
before combining the whole thing. Now it's about combined enough, so I can add the whole thing to it. And as you will see, the thing will get very cloudy right away. The reason is that the reason is that the egg white in it is going to start cooking. So you want to stir it because you don't want it to come uh, to, to burn, and it can burn. You want to stir it until it comes to a boil. And as soon as it comes to a boil, the egg white is going to hold all of the ingredients together into a type of crust through which the liquid is going to filter and get uh, crystal clear. You know, even though now it doesn't look that it's going to get crystal clear, it will. So you want to stir it, uh, maybe another minute or so. And during that time, I wanted to show you that the salmon that I have here, what you do, you want to take your salmon, clean up a little bit the pieces of onion on top, arrange it on a piece of plastic wrap like this, clean it up a little bit this way. And we want to wrap it together into a type of sausage and you want to cut it off this way, you know. Up oh, now my clarification is coming to a boil. So I let it come to a strong boil, and I shut it off. At that point, you don't want to disturb that crust. So what happened here, at that point also, you should let it rest for about 10 minutes. Develop the taste again, and to let it settle a little bit, then you strain it. What I have here is a piece of paper towel into a strainer. And that's what you strain it to. It's one of the finest way, you know, very thin to strain it. So what we're going to do is to put it right through. Maybe I should have my little here, be better. And we start putting it right through here. In fact, I can put it directly in it if I'm very careful, although I don't want to mess it up after you go through all of this. So you can do a clarification with meat juice, you know, with chicken stock, beef stock. This one is done with uh, fish stock. And you'll see in a second when it goes through, it's purely clarified. Now what happened is that this has to cool off. You put it into ice, and I have some here in the ice, which is cooling off until it starts getting hard. And I can see that this one is setting up already. So what you have next to you, you have a bit of aspic, a bit warmer, to add it to it in case it's set up too fast. You see, but you see it's absolutely crystal clear. As you can see, this one will be crystal clear also. It hasn't finished training yet, but that's the same idea. So now we can build it up together. What you do, first you put about a cup of aspic in the bottom of a pan and let it set. And this is what you get by the time it's set. That thing is going to get hard, as you can see here. Next. I have that salmon, one similar. This one, of course, hasn't had time to, to cool off. The mushroom, the same way. I have the same thing here, cold. So you want to unwrap. Maybe I move a little bit out of the way here to give me some space. You want to unwrap your salmon and uh, grab it together. It's like a sausage. And place it directly on top of your aspic here. The aspic is now hard. You want to put some mushroom on top of it and around. Add some mush more mushroom if you want to your aspic in there. And now that the aspic is really setting, you can see that it's setting. Then you put it on top of it to finish more mushroom, just to fill up the, to fill that up. And in addition to that, I had done here maybe even a few leaves of fresh, uh, fresh tarragon, because we have tarragon in it, that we put on top. I would want to put a few, a bit more aspic on top. This is a beautiful summer dish, crystal clear, you know, and uh, with a strong intensity of the vegetable in the stock. What you want to do now is to put that into the refrigerator until it's set. You know you cover it. I have one right there and take another one which has been setting for about an hour as you can see this one I could move it around it is set here so I want to serve this and with this I wanted to also serve 
some fresh horseradish. And the fresh horseradish that I have here, as you can see, it's very, very strong. You can peel it with a vegetable peeler. Take the dirt out of it. See, this is a mess. And with this now, take those tiny strip of vegetable peeler, strip of fresh horseradish. This is very, very pungent, you know. It goes so well with it. So this is what we want to do now. I want to serve some of this separate. I can put some in there, you know. You want to serve that on your table. And to cut this, you would want to go directly into it this way, you know, to cut a piece of the salmon and serve it with your aspic you know, a little bit like that, glistening, whoop, beautifully glistening like this. You could put a little bit of green salad around and a little bit of the horseradish on top of it here and there. Those flakes, as I say, are very pungent. At the first course for our summer menu, we're going to do a braised shiitake mushroom with bitter salad. I have different types of shiitake here. Those are fresh shiitake, those are dry shiitake, those are also dry shiitake, those are chrysanthemum shiitake, by far the best. Much more expensive than those, but really worth the, worth the difference of price. I have them soaking in liquid here. What you want to do is to remove the stem. The stem is extremely tough, you know, and you can use the stem in stock. Then after that, what we've done here is to put them flat into a large skillet, like this, and uh, use the liquid from the mushroom, you know, you use the liquid, you pour it gently in case there is a little bit of dirt uh, yep, in the bottom. We use a little bit of olive oil on top, just a dash, dash of salt, a little more water if you want, because I like them to cook a long time. Bring that to a bowl and you cook it until there is no more liquid. As I have here, there is no more liquid, and now that has been browning for a while, so I have nice crystallization of the mushroom here which is what I want, very chewy, almost like meat. And we're going to serve that on the bitter grain. I'll put that for the time being here. And as you see, I have a whole bunch of bitter grain here. I have what we call the frisé, you know, the French word for curly endive. This is the curly endive, except this one is about five times the price than this one. This is an escarole. Try to get it with the white center like this. And those, of course, are the radicchio. This is another type of radicchio, Chicore di Treviso, and this is the regular round dive. So we're going to use uh, that type and that type for us today, maybe two of those. And I'm going to do a vinaigrette in there first. So the vinaigrette, I want to put a clove of garlic, a vinaigrette with garlic, you know. So I crush the garlic here, chop it very fine. There is other way, of course, of grounding garlic, but I like to do it this way. Salt, pepper, oil and vinegar in the proportion of about mm, maybe three times the amount of oil for the amount of vinegar. You could have a little bit of mustard in there too, but this is fine this way. And now our, uh, red, uh, our endive, those are the Belgium endive, which of course in Belgium it's called chicon. Uh, and what is called endive in Belgium is actually, uh, it's actually what we call escarole here. That's what the Belgians call endive. So I mix this in there. And the green. You see, the advantage of that, as I say, we use a bitter green here. And the bitter green gives really a very specific chewiness and texture to that salad. So what we want to do is to mix that up. And uh, you can do that a little bit ahead, remember, because this is pretty tough other salad. So I would want to arrange uh, a bit of the salad on top here, maybe all around, maybe the endive. You know, you can choose however you want to present it and spend a little more time on it. And maybe the red one in the center here for us. And finally, of course, I'm going to bring that back here, put 
the mushroom on top, those large, chewy, elastic mushroom, you know, which, as I say, are really a, a delicacy. Let me that on top, and maybe you could have a couple of leaves or a little piece of uh, fresh basil on top for color. And this is the first course for our menu today. And now to finish our summer menu, the cla classic British dessert, summer pudding. We're going to do it with cherry. And as you see, I have a bunch of different cherries here. You pit them, you can pit them, of course, with the regular cherry peter to remove this. You can also use a knife. Using a knife, what you want to do is to go through the little hole here, put your thing and press to get the press to get the, the, the pit soft, you know, and get it out this way. And actually, my mother even used that type of thing, a type of uh, um, safety pin, you know, to go inside again and pull out your pit. One or the other is going to work. And uh, what we want to do is to cook it now. We put that in there. We have a pound and a half of cherries here about four tablespoons of uh, sugar and half a cup of red wine. You have a dry, fruity red wine on this. Bring it to a boil, cook it for about six, seven minutes, then let it cool off in the liquid. And this is what I have here. That mixture has been cooled off in the liquid. So what I want to do now is to prepare the pudding. So you take a bowl like this, and I place a couple of pieces of paper around because you need to um, to be sure that it's going to come out, you know? And you start with pound cake. I have 10 ounce pound cake here. You can put it right across here. Uh, then cut your pound cake in half. Put a piece here. There is no real rule, you know, to arrange that. You can arrange it in any way you like. Now I need some triangle for the corner here. You know, that you can do here and there. So I would put one here, try to make it fit a little bit, but it's not that, that absolutely essential, you know. Now, as you see, I have uh, a piece that I can put there. Oop, I can break it so it fit about. And another piece here. And that basically it, you know, you fill up the whole center. So now you start putting your cherry in it. Actually, you know what you do to be sure that the bottom is going to uh, so even better, take all of the trimming, some of the trimming already, and put it in there, you know. Uh, the whole liquid and all that ought to be absorbed. So you want to put it this way. And again, alternating it with some of those trimming here that I have. You want to keep the nicest piece for the top, of course. But I mean, I'll have plenty here. Maybe a little more. But you can see, basically, I can put the whole thing in there. Or maybe I'll keep one for me. A couple, but I put all the juice. And on top of this now, you want to put the rest of your pound cake. Arrange it in any way there. It doesn't really matter. No one is going to see the bottom. This way here and there, you know. And I have about all of the pound cake is going to be placed on that. You want to press it a little bit. And what I want to do with that is to put a piece of plastic wrap on top. You know, really press it around to tighten it because you want to do that at least, at least overnight. At least overnight so it really get together. You can even leave it longer, you know. And with that, what we want to do is a sauce. And what I have here is a mango, mango sauce. I have that mango that I peeled here. It's nice and uh, fresh and ripe, which is what you want. And a couple of tablespoons of honey with that. Here. Then with the honey, we put a little bit of water and maybe a tablespoon of dark rum for taste. If you object to the rum, then you can eliminate it or put another alcohol. Then we emulsify it into a puree. You could even strain it after if you want it as absolutely smooth, you know. Maybe a bit more water. And a fresh mango sauce. This way. And all you have to do, you can refrigerate that, of course, is to unmold your dessert now. And I have one which is done here, as you can see. 
So this one, I didn't even put press. I didn't even press anything in it. What I did, I put it, whoop, is it going to come out? Yes, about. If it stick a little bit in the bottom, doesn't matter. After all, it's the paper here. You see this one, I could put it upside down and it will press by itself this way. So I have it here. And of course, those little pieces of paper on the side, which are going to help, hopefully, to unmold it. So what you want to do is first to put this against it and use those uh, pull on this. There is always a certain element of suspense to this. Here we go. Hmm. OK, put that on top. Looks great. We put a little bit of the mango sauce all around. You can have put some extra one that you serve at the table. You know, you want to spread it out. And maybe decorating the top with some fresh cherries. We have some fresh cherries around also to decorate. I have in addition those tiny little uh, uh, champagne grapes, you know, which are going to look good in the sauce all around for your final decoration. This is a terrific finish for a great summer meal. All type of fresh stuff, fruit, a lot of vegetable, salad, and so forth. And all of that can be done ahead, you know, uh, which is great for summer. If you have friends coming, uh, you can start with the shiitake salad. And be sure, again, to buy the chrysanthemum if you can afford it. Actually, you can buy any type of wild mushroom. Or if you're in an area which has wild mushroom and you know how to pick them up, you can use that, of course, which is what I do very often with friends. But with the bitter green and that stronger dressing, it goes so well together. Then, of course, we have a salmon in aspic with horseradish flake. The aspic, I know, is a little complicated. It's, uh, it may seem a bit intimidating. But if you really follow uh, a straight method, it's relatively easy. You don't want the salmon to be overcooked inside, just slightly moist. And the very flavorful vegetable aspect is great. And finally, that great uh, summer pudding, which is a treat. Uh, which you can do with any type of berry. I mean, in England, conventionally, it's going to be done with uh, uh, boysen berry and, uh, and uh, what we call ballon in France, which is a type of gooseberry and uh, red berry and so forth. Oh, and a mixture of all of this. Here, we did it only with beautiful cherries. And with that, we're going to serve a pouilly fuissé. A pouilly fuissé is a chardonnay from the lower part of Burgundy. Uh, next above Beaujolais, it's a very fragrant, very fragrant, spicy type of uh, wine, which is going to go absolutely perfect with our meal tonight. Nice and cold for a hot weather fair and a light summer menu. I hope you enjoy our menu that I made for you today. See you next time and happy cooking. <laughs>